Hello, everyone. I'm Jeremy Jones, and this is the first episode of The Coach's Corner. The Coach's Corner will be aired each episode of Bayer's Digest Live, and we'll be trying to bring you some easy information that will cover all levels of pool players. Here in our first episode of The Coach's Corner, we'll be going over three key fundamentals to better your habits and stay away from future headaches. Those three, ha those three fundamentals are grip pressure, location of the backhand, and also your bridge length and how those three things really go together. We'll first go over the grip pressure. Grip pressure is something that causes a lot of headaches when not done well. Uh, it leads towards a lot of other bad habits and is just a very, very important part of our game. So when we talk about grip pressure, I want you to think of two words, loose and or relaxed. Those will keep you to where the cue does a lot of work for you. Um, under tense situations, we tend to want to grip the cue a little more anyways. So if you can stay loose from the start, it will help you when you're competing or any high pressure situation. Now, the grip pressure, another thing I like to remind people is you're always going to hold the cue. You don't have to really force holding the cue when you're playing pool. It's just something that's going to naturally happen. So if you can stay as loose as you can, it's just going to reap the rewards later, later down the road. Now, when we talk about grip pressure and we move on to the next segment, which is the location of the backhand, this is something that has pretty much rung true ever since I started playing pool and probably long before, is what we want with the backhand is we really want to be at 90 degrees. Of course, with the loose grip, this helps because 90 degrees becomes where gravity really takes place and starts to put us in a good position with the backhand. Now, if we can stay loose and in a hanging position, we can learn to just bring the cue up to that position and just get to feel to where the arm is just kind of limp and hanging. This will actually produce a lot of easy power, which we'll learn a more about in later episodes, um, but it also usually feels your best when you strike the ball. Now also when it comes to, those are the positives of being at 90 degrees, let's talk about the negatives of being off of 90 degrees. The one that's not the most uncommon is when we're beyond 90 degrees, that is something that is usually quickly fixed. We see it a lot with young, young kids, maybe smaller individuals at times. And what happens is the children start to spread the hands to be able to handle the weight of the bigger cues. Otherwise, the tip would kind of go forward. And if you start at a young age, you can easily kind of stay a little bit past 90 degrees. And what happens is if we take the cue ball and we think about striking the cue ball, one thing that we'll learn about 90 degrees, well, that is the bottom of the arc. So when you talk about the bottom of the arc, the bottom of the arc is the most strongest point in the swing. So that is where we want to be at whenever we are striking the cue ball. So if we get a little beyond, what happens is, imagine again the cue ball's here. We're kind of in the air. We're in a very weak position at cue, when we impact the cue ball. So what happens is it's very hard to continue the stroke the cue ball kind of becomes two or three times the weight that it actually is because we're in such a weak position. And also, um, it kind of wants to stop the stroke, but we also get a lot of percussion, meaning just a lot of uh, movement of the hand at impact because we're in a weak position. Now, if we talk about being forward of 90 degrees, forward of 90 degrees causes a lot of the same problems as beyond 90 degrees, behind 90 degrees. But what happens is this is a more common thing that we see with players because you do have a bit more control than beyond 90 degrees and it just kind of feels better, but it does cause a lot of the same issues because when we're forward, we start to tighten up here, even without the cue stick in my hand. As soon as I move the arm forward, I start to feel a little tension here on the inner part of the arm. So if we're forward at address at impact, well, we don't have a whole lot of stroke to go forward with. We don't have a lot of space. So therefore, we usually don't take much of a backswing and we become a very quick kind of hitty kind of stroke. 
which leads to a lot of problems. The main thing about a HITI stroke is it's not very repeatable. Repeatable is what we want, and we also want things we can rely on. So the loose grip at 90 degrees are two things we can certainly rely on. And then that leads us to our third, which is bridge length. And bridge length is pretty simple overall. As long as we can stay away from extremes is what I tell most people. So we don't want to crowd the ball too, too much. That one is fairly uncommon. The one that I think is one of the biggest killers in the game is the long bridge, a bridge that gets way too far away from the cue ball. And what happens is, whenever we get a long ways from the cue ball, most people actually develop a shorter stroke because they can't handle the takeaway with being so far away from the cue ball. Also what happens is, we end up becoming a hitter of the cue ball much more because we don't want the back elbow to break down. So now, along, even with the loose grip, even with at 90 degrees, a long bridge will become as big a killer as anything in the game. So my suggestion is probably between six to eight inches. That's your kind of medium for the bridge, your regular bridge. Sometimes we'll shorten it up for certain situations like taking power off the ball. And sometimes we have to have a long bridge because of the situation, whether we're stretched over the table or another object ball. But for the most part, somewhere between six or eight inches gets a ton done. It gives you a lot of room to make a backswing. And it also will create much more of a follow through on the swing itself. So if you can, Stay loose, 90 degrees at the back, a very, very, very important part of the swing. And then again, try and manage your bridge length. And that's a good word to think about, manage. If we, in a good bridge position, now we can let the swing kind of go where it wants and it won't be out of control. So again, if we can stay loose with the backhand, get it at 90 degrees, be pretty simple with the bridge length, nothing too short and nothing too long. That's going to lean towards better habits in the future and a lot less headaches. So stay loose.